Speaking of people that can't make sense out of anything, Moxley was up next. He did another promo where he actually out loud tries to make sense of the booking and can't. No wonder he's a mental case. He's pacing around a nervous wreck at his wit's end because he can't understand the booking. Uh, then he has a match with Cesar Romero, who's now the underneath preliminary heel talent has a group and, uh, with uh, Ryan Nemeth, and there was another guy there at ringside, and I don't know. Um, at least this was babyface and heel. You could tell that, and Nemeth pulled Moxley's leg, and that was probably the most exciting bit of the whole fucking deal because Cesar Romero moves around like a sack of wet hammers. He has got the most awkward body language, and now that we've heard that he's been in the business for a while, I'm... I'm deathly afraid this is as good as he's going to get. So they did a ridiculous referee distraction so that Moxley could DDT Nemeth. And the they turned the ref around who still saw Nemeth in the ring like that's not supposed to mean something. And then Moxley choked out Caesar. So he shoehorned in both of his finishes. He got the DDT on Nemeth and then he could, he, so he could do the choke out on Caesar Romero. What the, Jesus Christ. I would like somebody that knew how to cut a promo to come in with some big badass, like a fucking Jacob Fatu or something, and promo goddamn John Moxley, and just say, you got the guts to come out here and talk about how badass you are when you are a fishy white pale boy from Cincinnati. And son, you maybe got scared when you used to watch monster movies on your mother's kitchen floor at night on the black and white TV when you were watching The Cool Ghoul on Channel 19 and Frankenstein was running around. Maybe that's where you got all this violence and weirdness in your head. But this guy right here next to me is a real monster. This guy right here next to me comes from the streets of California, the Samoan gangs, places you don't want to be. He hangs out in a place where people get cut and shot on a regular basis while you're worried about losing a crap game or a street fight over in Newport. Mr. Cincinnati Kid, let me explain something to you. Jacob Fatu is the man who breaks bones, the man who crushes windpipes, the man who causes chaos. And if you're in his periphery, if you are in his presence, there's an element of danger, just like when you're in the presence of the Frankenstein monster. But... When that monster wants you, when you are his single goal, that's when you really find out what it's like to feel fear down deep in the pit of your gut, John Moxley, so you can be a fishy white pale boy talking about all your accomplishments in Cincinnati. But this man, he's, he's got a criminal record and an evil disposition and malfeasance and criminal intent. And something wicked your way is going to come, John Moxley. He's going to tear his, your flesh from your bones and give you a little taste of what you always promise people. Something like that. Take the piss out of Moxley instead of everybody going, Oh, goddamn, he's so badass. Is he losing weight, too? He definitely, I said it a few weeks ago, he doesn't have as much muscle tone as he had a year ago. He looks paler and like he's lost wait so i don't uh, know i'm pretty sure they had color tv when he was a kid so he wasn't sitting on the floor watching black and white tv but no he, he was poor he lived in cincinnati my aunt lola and uncle tommy were from covington right across the river from cincinnati and they were poor and they had a black and white tv propped up on the old what color year? tv that it went out what year he had yeah, color tv growing up he's not from 1970 he was poor he had a black and white sitting on top of the color set that had gone out. And that's what the rabbit ears, no. that's what you use to watch the cool ghoul on channel 19. I think he's Saturday night for creature features. I think he's a little bit too young for that, but I will say, well, he, lo he looks older than his age. Another faction, like you said, another now this time, just undercard job guy faction, nothing against any of those guys. You know, Ryan Nemeth has looked good on TV, but is there any reason why these guys that keep losing matches on TV are all of a sudden together as a little unit banding nothing. together? I will say this. We just played on the drive through recently. Someone sent in slam poetry about, you know, Jim Cornette and the world of Jim Cornette. Watching Moxie's promo, I thought, you know, if someone put some of that music behind it, that's what it would sound like. <laughs> it would sound like his own little version of slam poetry. But anyway, that's all I have to say. An update from Team Taz. There's still no problems in Team Taz, except that Brian Cage obviously has a problem, and every time they say there's no problems, he gets snotty with another member of the group. 
and this it, it, it they don't even bother to 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 engage in the premise that they're doing an interview about something else. And then it happens organically that cage argues with people. They start out, no, there's no problems. And then cage immediately argues with somebody. So it's obvious and horrible. 